All right, today we're going to take notes on rhetoric. This is in your new media unit, so open up your composition notebooks, put a section in there for rhetoric notes, and write down the following. If you need to pause, that's fine. Make sure you get everything copied down just as you need to. First of all, what is rhetoric? Aristotle defines rhetoric as discovering and using the available means of persuasion in a given situation. In this unit, we're going to read a collection of articles that are trying to get us to believe something about social media. Um, we need to figure out how we are being convinced to believe these things are true or to support, support these findings. And we are also going to write something and try to persuade people. And we need to figure out the best way to go about that. So these things will help. This is the rhetorical triangle, ethos, pathos, and logos. All three of these combined help motivate our audience to believe in what we are saying and believe what we are saying is true. So let's take a closer look. Ethos is all about credibility. It's the use of evidence and support that's up to date from a trustworthy source and created by a professional or some kind of authority in the field. We believe the source because they're credible or even likable. A lot of times, just because you believe in the person saying it or you trust the person who's saying it, you're more likely to trust the information coming from them. In this case, Marilyn Monroe is seen as a beautiful movie star, and she's telling us that four out of five people in Hollywood use this luster cream shampoo. So if we believe in her and we think that she's wonderful, if we want to be wonderful like her and beautiful like her, we're more likely to use this shampoo. It's just an appeal to credibility. I believe in her, I'll believe in the product, or I'll believe in whatever they're saying. Logos is all about logic. So in this case, we're using logical reasoning and we're providing facts, examples, and any kind of summation reasoning. So here are these facts. They are proven through science. They aren't debatable. Here are the case studies. Um, we're more likely to believe that. Here's an example. So in this case, th these are the results that we found. We're more likely to believe that. Um, here is the co full collection of all the things that I have proved to you today. Here is the reasoning that shows I must be right. We're more likely to believe that. Uh, in this ad, we're stacking a bunch of facts about the dog food. What can it do for the dog? So oral care, skin care, um, all these wonderful chemicals, ingredients, minerals, all these things in this dog food. So we see all this information provided to us and we believe, hey, pedigree must be healthy. They're appealing to logic here. Pathos is an appeal to emotions. Uh, there are a lot of emotions that influence people to side with an issue. Maybe we just feel nostalgic. Maybe we feel happy about something. Maybe we can feel sad. Um, all of those are getting you to act, to feel motivated to support a cause. Um, fear also works well. So authors can do that through word choice. They can do that through anecdotes. Those are like little stories that they might tell to make you feel a certain emotion. Um, they can put sad music in there or happy music that might trigger emotion or images that might trigger a certain emotion. For instance, this ad has a pretty scary image of a normal human leg and then a uh, replaced leg. And it says spare parts for humans are not as original as those for cars. Don't drink and drive. So we're motivated through fear. We're motivated through the emotion of sadness. Um, you can't fix somebody after you break them. So we wouldn't want to break them by drinking and driving. We wouldn't break ourselves through drinking and driving. It's an appeal to emotions. It's not meant to necessarily make you feel good. Think of like all those really sad dog ads on TV. Those make you feel sad. Uh, but it motivates you to act and it motivates you to support something. So emotion is really important as well. So how are you being persuaded? As you read in your articles, you need to check for loaded words that make you feel a certain way. Certain words have certain connotations. If I call you skinny or I call you thin, it doesn't sting quite the way if I called you scrawny. So look for those word choice uh, moments where maybe an author is picking a certain word because it has a trigger to it. Look for facts and statistics that prove a claim. Where did that research come from? Is that credible? Um, can I believe in that? Is this really proving their point? Uh, are, these, are these facts that were produced one time? Are they facts that are produced over and over again? And watch for credible sources like experts in the field. Sometimes they can pull in people who aren't actually credible sources, but maybe people that you tend to believe inside with. So if I brought in 
Oprah to talk about some scientific study. We believe in Oprah, but Oprah is no scientist. So be careful with things like that, uh, logical fallacies. But as you are reading, um, examine all three of those to see if you can find instances where maybe you're being appealed to through logos, pathos, or ethos. And how can you persuade? Well, when it comes time to write your paper, make sure you craft your writing to emotionally connect with your audience. Before you begin, ask yourself, how do you want them to feel about this? Do you want them to feel sad? Do you want them to feel scared? Do you want to feel the, do you want to make them feel uplifted about something? Then appeal to them using language that's going to draw those emotions out. Use your facts and statistics. You can research, and we also are going to look at a lot of research as we go through the unit. Pull from those things. Use those facts and statistics. People like facts and statistics because it makes them feel like this is science. So use those things to your advantage. And finally, make sure you cite your sources and make sure they're credible sources. Unfortunately, not a whole lot of people are going to believe in something like Wikipedia. But if you go straight to the scientist and say, this scientist right here uh, figured this out in his study, we're more likely to believe it. So be cautious with wh where you're getting your information from. And if it's a good source, make sure you're advertising that. Put that right into the text that so-and-so very important person has said this. We're more likely to believe that. All right, there you go. That's rhetoric. Thanks for listening.